Today we're going to talk about how to connect an optical end stop to the NKS S Gen L version 2.0. Now I have the optical end stop wiring here labeled that I traced and I'll show you how to do that in a second from the connector. But as you can see it's red, black, and then an unmarked one. So the red is voltage, the black is signal, or excuse me, the red is voltage, the black is ground, and the middle one is signal. So I'll show you how to deal with that in a moment. But I'm going to zoom in on the actual optical end stop for the connector side so you can see what's going on. So as you can see here on the optical end stop, there is a G at the top. There's a S and then there's a V. So it's ground, signal, voltage. That's important to know when tracing out the cable. That's why I showed you that. So what we're going to do is we're going to see in Marlin's, or excuse me, we're going to see in MakerBase's website how to configure that. So I'm going to pull that up for you in just a second. And as you can see over here, they talk about their X minus, which is X minimum. Then they have Y minimum and Z minimum. They also have X max, Y max, and Z max. And the order of the pins for all of them is voltage, ground, and then signal. And each signal pin is different, as you can see. Now the X max, Y max, and Z max may relate to other devices now so they may use filament runout detectors as a way to use these for other devices which are still end stops to a degree in their own way so now that we know the pins we can go back over to the desktop and we can actually set up the correct pin order so i'm going to do this on the x minimum so I'm going to start with voltage and connect it right here, then ground, and then finally signal. So as you can see, there are three wires there, voltage, ground, and signal. So we should have that set up correctly. So I'm going to actually connect the power to it right now so you can see what's going to happen in a moment because on your computer, you'll actually see a pop-up for the USB drive if everything's functional. So I'll show you that real quick. So over here we have our firmware.cur. This was the last time that firmware was actually loaded on the board and cur stands for current. So if we go over to VS Code, we can load our project by clicking on the Explorer, then open folder, then in this case, it's in my downloads folder. So I'm going to open up the first Marlin, then the second Marlin. Then I'm going to say select folder. Inside here, I'm going to click on the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, and then boards.h. And I'm going to search on S Gen underscore L and you can see that it's marked in two places over here is the one that we're looking for so we're gonna copy that and we're gonna note that it's the LPC 1769 because that's our chipset that this is in this group so we're gonna close out of boards.h then we're gonna minimize core and source and go to configuration.h we're going to search first on motherboard and we're going to highlight the ramps board and then paste our changes in here because this is the board that we're working with. We also need to change the serial port from zero to negative one. Hang on a second here. There we go. And once that's set, we're going to check on our end stops real quick. So we're going to search on end stop and down here you can see that our three end stops are currently enabled 
for the x minimum, y minimum, and z minimum. All the max ones are disabled because you only need one end step per axis to find the zero place that it starts and then it will count out from there. Down here we have different types of things that you can enable to smooth out your signal if you have the electronics on your end stop such as capacitors and resistors to smooth out your signal. But in this case we're going to skip that. Down here if your end stop gives a reading that is backwards from what you think it should be you can always change your false to a true or your true to a false to change the way that it trips being either that there was something there or not there and I'll show you in other tutorials what that's about like my end stop tutorial and I'll leave a link in the upper right hand corner so you can see what I did with end stops on the MKS S Gen L version 2.0 so now that we have that set I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to set up the actual configuration for this. And just so you know, MakerBase did supply the board that I am working with, so I will place Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience. So as I was saying before, noting the chipset, it's LPC 1769. That's what we're currently working with. But before we build, we need to do a clean in case we have other builds in here and we can start fresh. So it cleans out the .pio folder. So to upload, all we have to do is press the upload button and it will compile all of our builds together. Thus all the compiling that you see. Once this is complete, we can check our drive to make sure that it's set correctly and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment when it completes and what I'll do is I'll actually go over to the folder and as you can see right here it's already loaded on our folder so it's firmware.bin so that's what took place with the actual upload over here so we're going to go back over to our desktop now and we're going to remove the USB power for a moment. Then we're going to plug it back in. And now that it's enabled, we're actually going to go over to Pronerface and see what's occurring. So inside Pronerface, as you can see, we have our configuration on COM port 1. So to fix that issue that we need to know which COM port we're working with, we're going to switch over here for a second. And I'm going to go to Device Manager, and I'm going to open that up. Inside Device Manager, we're going to verify that our port is the correct one, which is COM port 10. So I'm going to click over here, and I'm going to actually add a 10. Then I'm going to click Connect. And as you can see now, it says Connecting and Printer is now online. So I'm going to check the status of the end stop by typing M119 and pressing Enter. And as you can see, the bottom two being the X minimum and Z minimum are triggered. That's because no end stop is connected. In the other case, we do see open. But if you were to see open and you're pretty sure you connected it, it might be that you need to invert the logic in the Marlin firmware that I showed you a moment ago. So to test this, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our end stop and we're going to place something in it to trigger it. So I'm going to place this little piece of paper here and you can see the light changed. But now we're going to do M119 again. So as you can see now, it's triggered. So I'm going to remove the paper and the light goes back on. And I'm going to do an M119 again. And as you can see, it does say open. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. 
and thank you for your time.